Hello, I'm Ruth Mays, the Director of the Global Business Strategy at Computomics. The presentation today will showcase the advantages of machine learning for predictive plant breeding. We will also explain the difference between machine learning technology and statistical methods. The Computomics team consists of bioinformaticians and machine learning experts who have spent many years developing and applying machine learning to breeding to develop our Exceed score technology. I'd like to focus on the technical aspects and provide an example of how we use machine learning for predictive breeding. I will only focus on hybrids today as we don't have a lot of time, but the technology can adapt to any breeding program. In this talk, I will explain the technology, the difference between statistical methods and machine learning, the questions and challenges that machine learning can solve, and how to apply the technology to a hybrid breeding program. We were approached by breeders who wanted to gain more insights and receive better results than they were currently achieving with traditional statistical methods. Breeders will tell you that the environment can have a major effect on phenotypes, and it is difficult for statistical models to account for this. This is especially true for more complex traits. We started to develop machine learning based technology to address these issues and find solutions to these problems. The prediction accuracy for monogenic traits is very similar between statistical models and machine learning. But machine learning approaches can considerably improve the prediction accuracy for more complex polygenic traits like yield or oil content. Statistical models use a simplified kinship matrix approach and focuses on the relationship between each line. The machine learning models and evaluates the influence of each individual marker and of combinations of markers on the phenotype. By doing so, they are able to model non-additive effects such as epistasis and dominance. You also get a better understanding of general combinability and can identify cases of specific combinability as machine learning technologies can integrate very heterogeneous data. You can incorporate environment, environmental measurements such as precipitation, temperature, soil types etc and machine learning can determine the importance of each factor that goes into the marker and of the interaction between these factors we can also tell which environmental factors influence the phenotype the technology can also optimize for multiple traits at once <clears throat> and make use of trait correlations to improve prediction accuracy so this provides a better approximation of the biological reality that can be achieved with traditional statistics. We developed the machine learning technology to help breeders reach their goals more efficiently. One of the core functionalities of Exceed Score is the simulation of millions to billions of offspring to assess the combining ability and the performance of parental lines. Additionally, Interpretable models can explain underlying gene trait relationships, which could be useful for gene editing. <clears throat> Exceed score doesn't require any prior knowledge of the population structure. We can use this, but it isn't a prerequisite to make good predictions. We can model the influence of all factors that go into the prediction model and can tell you which environmental factors and markers influence a trait. The technology is able to predict for untested locations and identify which lines will pair well under which environmental conditions. An ideal training population should reflect the genetic and phenotypic diversity of the breeding program, which is really key for good predictions as machine learning predictions learn from the data. The data needs to include mediocre lines as well as elite lines as machine learning 
learns from the data and it needs to differentiate across the diversity of the breeding program. With machine learning, you are accessing all of the genetic potential as opposed to a subset that is typical with statistical methods. With increased data quality and quantity, the model improves, which means you improve predictive power each cycle. You don't need an abundance of data, but you do need robust, good quality data sets. So now I would like to give you some examples of how we support hybrid breeding programs. <clears throat> there are, these are the main questions that machine learning addresses in a hybrid breeding program. The technology can support breeders in identifying the best testers. It can tell you which crosses will result in superior progeny. And it will give you a good understanding of the general combining ability, as well as providing the ability to identify cases of special combining ability. One question that comes up at the beginning of developing a hybrid breeding program is the right choice of testers. This diagram shows an example of a conventional hybrid breeding program. We have female heterotic pools A, B, E and F, and male heterotic pools C, D and G and H. The breeder will pick a set of testers from each side and create all possible hybrids with the other side. Based on field tests, new testers are selected and new crosses are made and evaluated in the following years. This has to be done multiple times to ensure that the breeder gets good combiners from both pools. In this case, the whole process took about eight years from start to finish. A breeder can test only a small number of test hybrid combinations as the field space is very limited. Machine learning can create a model based on a set of all hybrids and testers and simulate and predict the phenotype of all possible combinations between them. This way you can evaluate the combined ability, identify optimal testers and simultaneously improve both sides of the pedigree at once. Machine learning can create a model based on the set of all hybrids and testers and simulate and predict the phenotype of all possible combinations between them. <clears throat> We can also identify low performing lines early on, which means that low performers are not planted in the field and you feel you say you're saving field plots only for the high performers. The technology can simulate all possible crosses to identify high performing hybrids. It can simulate and predict millions to billions of genotypes within a couple of hours. This is much more challenging with statistical methods as you only cross the top parents and test them and, and identify a couple of candidates to take forward into the next cycle. One of our clients saved half the time of their breeding pipeline and increased the number of candidates 10 times by using the machine learning model. With this slide, you can see on the left is a classical kinship matrix approach. The hybrids, of these crosses are represented by the dark gray squares in the left-hand matrix, and the red squares represent the top crosses that a breeder would advance to the next stage of his breeding pipeline. The matrix on the right-hand side shows the exceed score approach, as the technology simulates all crosses between all parents, it dramatically increases the possibility to identify high-performing hybrids. And it can also identify cases of special combining ability. The red squares symbolize the top 1% of top lines, and all the red squares outside the upper left box are cases of special combining ability. We have a su successful collaboration ongoing with VEX hybrids. They gave us permission to show this real data from one of their breeding programs. The top row depicts an average maize breeding program. The bottom row shows the Bex maize 
breeding program. Using a seed score, we advance both sides of the pedigree at once by simulating all double haploid crosses. The training population with exceed score was two years of field data from which we built a machine learning model. In contrast to, the, to performing field tests in a statistical model where 2,000 lines are picked for field testing. We simulated 30,000 virtual hybrids and skipped the first year of field trials. From these 30,000 virtual hybrids, 400 were selected and planted based on good performance prediction. And an incredible 52% of those were advanced into the third year as they showed good performance in the field. Within just two years, 33 lines went into pre-commercial tests, six into commercial evaluation, and one was launched commercially. This was only possible by advancing both sides at once and by doing large scale hybrid simulations. The key success factor for BEX is that they dramatically increase the possibility of identifying new elite lines. We started with a pool of 30,000 hybrids to choose from compared to just 2,000 to find a new superior hybrid. So this showcases how you can increase the likelihood of identifying and advancing new hybrids within your breeding program. The most interesting aspect about machine learning is that it provides the ability to improve polygenic traits as it looks at the interaction of each marker and combinations of markers, which models non-additive effects, including epistasis and dominance. It also provides the ability to simulate all conceivable crosses within a training data set, allowing the breeder to optimize for a set of complex traits and identify the best performing hybrids for both general combinability and specific combinability, which ensure genetic gain each cycle. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? <laughs>